I just feel like a lot of people often find themselves feeling disheartened and disappointed after they do workouts like this and they don't achieve the results that they were almost promised or the results that they expected. Basically, today's actually a really warm day and I'm struggling here. But obviously, in typical fashion, we rarely take the jumper off because we're hiding under the layers of triple extra large clothing because it's not quite summer yet. That's what we're gonna say. In reality, it's probably actually just insecurities. But we'll get there another time. Basically, oh, it's video time because it's Monday and I'm actually gonna do a TikTok video. I know I say it all the time and I am actually gonna get on it. I will start posting to TikTok soon. I'm just trying to actually kind of think about what I want to post and I'm also trying to gauge what you want me to post sort of thing. So if you have any input regarding what you want me to start posting on TikTok, please comment it down below and I shall add it to the list. I've been nagging myself and other people have been nagging me to post to TikTok for so long, I'm gonna have to start doing it soon. And if you do care and wanna get prepped for when I do start posting to TikTok, it's the same as my Instagram, which is at Harry underscore TFNL. Obviously TikTok videos, eh? Got a few bits and bobs to go through. Got some good, good information and some good debunking of some bits and bobs too, actually. It's, it's quite a good collection. But before we get into the spice, I must pre-spice you with the spice of my own. If at any point you decide you like the video, please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video. 1200 likes in the first 24 hours is the goal, as it has been for so long because I'm scared to progressively overload. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. Today's not actually a hat, it's a headpiece, but it's less about the, the, the head. How do we feel about this? I don't know if this is meant to go behind my ears or I feel like it's meant to go in front of them because if it was behind, you would then see my ears, which defeats the, yeah. This is what's occurring today. It's here because I'm listening to you when you tell me what TikToks you want me to post. See, see what I did there? Ears listening, ow. A few things we're gonna cover. I've got seven lined up here. You don't know what they are yet. You can only see this first one. This one has sound, so I can't play it because YouTube and the copyright strike. This is me. This is YouTube and the copyright strike. I say, oh, song. YouTube says, shut up, Harry. Not on my platform. That's pretty much what happens. Uh, they don't actually physically slap me, although emotionally, I feel like maybe they do. This right here is exactly, tell me what, tell me what it is exactly how your last reps should look each set. Let's go back and look at that again. And this is gonna be relevant for a few reasons. Okay, we have a look. It's getting tough, it's getting tough, yeah. So when you're looking at optimizing the ability of muscle, so hypertrophy, you want to be kind of in that, in the green zone, which is zero to four reps in reserve. So zero reps in reserve being failure, Four reps in reserve mean that you have four reps left until you absolutely obliterate yourself and therefore you are training close to failure, which is why I say you should be training two if not close to failure. Again, where you go in that range is up to you. There's obviously an argument of greater fatigue as you get closer to failure, but then there's also some evidence suggesting maybe that's not so much the case. Personally, I take everything minus squat, bench and deadlift if I were to do them to failure, but my volume is obviously relatively low to combat that heightened intensity. I have mentioned a few times, people are notoriously bad at gauging where failure failure actually is. And I was very guilty of this myself because training to failure is a skill. If you're looking to optimize hypertrophy, it's very much a skill you need to learn. Not everybody's trying to optimize hypertrophy, which I understand, I acknowledge. So when you see a rep like this, it's still moving well. There's no real like mass technical breakdown. It's not a grind. The speed of the, the concentric portion of the reps, obviously the contracting portion, is not slowing down. It's still fast. Therefore, I would say this is a very poor gauge of where failure actually is for this individual. Again, it very much depends on the person because some people can grind through reps like you wouldn't believe. Other people, sometimes like myself actually, I'll suddenly go, oh, that was easy. Suddenly, boom, that's the end of me. Your final rep when looking at failure should probably take like a couple of seconds of you just trying to complete the rep and you're unable to do so. Something along those lines, provided your technique doesn't break down to the point in which injury risk has increased. Something I wish I knew sooner. What do you wish you knew sooner? If you want to tone up your stomach, get a smaller waist, the Stairmaster. This is actually interesting because I actually see this quite a lot. Level 10 to 12 for 20 minutes a day. Quite a common thing, like even the next TikTok, me after hearing that the Stairmaster at speed seven, 30 minutes gives you abs and I've only done it for a couple of days. I'm already seeing results. The Stairmaster is not a magical piece of equipment. I do think it's a bloody fantastic machine to use if you are going to do cardio at the gym. The smaller waist, i.e. the kind of reduction in fat mass, we'll say, is going to come from a calorie deficit. Whether 
whether you get to that calorie deficit through eating less and maybe doing more steps or eating less and doing cardio on the treadmill or on the rower on the Stairmaster is not so relevant because ultimately it's still intake versus expenditure. So if you burn 400 calories on the Stairmaster and you burn 400 calories on the rower, you've still burnt 400 calories. Although I do say that a lot of people can achieve their like fat loss goals by eating less, doing more steps and lifting some weights. If you want to do additional cardio in the form of like a Stairmaster or something along those lines, I'm fully for it. You do what's best for you. Choose the piece of cardio equipment that you enjoy the most and tolerate the most, because if you hate it, you're probably not going to stick to it or do it. Ultimately, this very much comes down to your ability to remain consistent with something. It's all going to be saying, well, option A means you'll burn a thousand calories an hour. Option B means you'll burn 600 calories an hour. But if you hate option A and you won't do it, option B is probably best for you because you can remain more consistent with it. So this is a big one. I've actually seen a few people do some videos on this and I'm going to give my input. I'm not going to cover the whole video because it's two minutes and 20 seconds long. And the kind of the thing I enjoy about the TikTok videos is I get to cover a lot of topics briefly, like kind of just dip a toe in and then can maybe expand on them in, in future videos. So it's almost like you can get like multiple lessons in one video without going into too much detail. But there are a couple of bits and bobs I do want to cover in this video. About three years ago, I retired as a top national bikini bodybuilding athlete I was ranked about top five in the nation and I was fully sponsored which means that I was traveling all over every single month in order to compete in different states that meant drinking a lot a lot of protein shakes and I actually ended up gaining about 50 pounds of lean muscle mass in just a year 15 pounds of lean muscle mass in a year is a huge amount of muscle mass and there are many variables to consider when you look at like how much muscle mass you can gain in a year you obviously got to look at how new you are to training is this your first year or your tenth year you've got to look at your like your diet your training things so many things like your recovery many things so gaining 15 pounds of muscle mass in a year without the use of performance enhancing drugs so peds is extremely unlikely i don't want to say impossible because you never know what could happen in my first year of training i highly doubt i put on 15 pounds of muscle mass but without enhancements i'm going to say it probably didn't happen so yeah the protein powder that i used had amazing benefits at first but i was using it for a long time and i started to get very very sick the symptoms were subtle at first but they eventually picked up a lot more I found myself in the hospital every single period, every single month. That is very unfortunate, and I'm sorry that this individual has had to go through that, because that sounds horrible and no one wants to deal with that. Protein powder most likely did not cause that. I think whey protein is essentially like heavily demonized, because everyone's like, oh, protein's going to do this to you, it's really bad for you here, it's really bad for you here. Well, it's not actually. There are some risks that you can get protein powder that has been tainted with PEDs that has actually happened a few times in in the past where supplement companies will put certain anabolics in their protein so I think Winstrol was used once Anavar was also used and maybe some other stuff making them more effective and people are like oh wow the best protein I've ever used I actually got bigger on it so I'm gonna take more some companies have actually been exposed and admitted doing this I can think of two names off the top of my head I think ultimately there are some digestion issues people can have a protein which ultimately comes down to the quality of the protein I think but realistically whey protein is largely just whey protein some people can't digest it very well which is fair enough I, I was one of those people for a while until I found a protein that sat a lot better with me but again I, I don't think protein powder was to blame but that being said I'm also not a doctor and I've never claimed to be a doctor. I'm merely a fitness professional. Don't stress about protein powder. Find one that sits well with you. Find one you can digest and find one you actually like the taste of. Because if you're gonna drink it, you probably actually want to tolerate it. There are some nice protein powders out there. I'll give them that. The ones I've got at the moment, I'm actually a big fan of. To find one I've enjoyed, I've had to go through a lot of ones I have not enjoyed. When I tell you hello darkness, my old friend, I mean it. The amount of times I've just been sat there in my kitchen looking at a protein shake and in my head I'm thinking, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. And that's actually a tribute to all of you because someone said, oh, Harry, where's a poem? That's my favourite poem. And I'm also going to acknowledge, I should have said this at the start so people don't miss it. I appreciate the poems in the comment section of the previous video. Honestly, I love it. And I, I didn't realise that the TFNL community and the TFNL family were so talented. And I just want you to know that I appreciate all of you. I'm not creative enough to think of a poem myself. If I do, maybe it'll be largely disappointing and you'll probably laugh at me, not with me. Maybe that could be my TikTok. Harry Tiefner Poetry. There you go, I've nailed it, I'm a genius, I really am. I see a lot of videos like this lingering TikTok. I'm sure there was no bad intention or anything. Random girl running thinking she'll only lose fat. You don't know why the individual's running. You don't know what they're trying to achieve. They may just enjoy it. I know what you're thinking, Harry, do you enjoy running? And no, despite being a cross country runner when I was a young boy, I do not enjoy running. 
but you may enjoy running. And if you want to run because you enjoy running and you could remain consistent with running, then you bloody well run. And realistically, the gym is an intimidating enough environment and it, it's hard for a lot of people. And I acknowledge that because I was for many years very intimidated of the gym. And even to this day, when I go to new gyms, I am oftentimes intimidated because it's a new environment. I'm quite an anxious person. The last thing you want to see is stuff like this lingering online where it makes you feel like you're being judged. It looks like people are going to be spending more time looking at you than they actually are. Some of you may be working out at home. Some of you may actually well be interested in going to the gym, but you are maybe a bit anxious and a bit uncertain due to fear of judgment and potentially something like this occurring. Most people in the gym, in all honesty, do not care what you're doing. I don't mean that in a negative or rude manner. I mean, they're so focused on what they're doing and their workout, they almost don't have time to think about what you're doing and your workout. The first thing that often pops into your head when you see somebody in the gym isn't judgment or negativity. It's often well done for doing something, like well done for being here. If you're doing something that you enjoy, because it benefits you either from a health standpoint, like physically, or a mental health standpoint, or whatever it may be, I appreciate it and I respect it. As long as you're doing it for you and it's making you happy, that's the main thing, you know? So please don't fear the, the judgment of the gym. More often than not, most people actually want to encourage you. Oh, go on then, an arms workout, do this. I'm curious, we'll look at a few things. Interesting, interesting. I always worry they're gonna start selling people plans that's probably gonna be full of misinformation that leads them down a nasty rabbit hole. Let's just assume all the movements are against resistance with an appropriate line of force, i.e. if you're doing like a chest flight, it will be pushing that way, not down. You know what I mean. This is gonna be anterior delt dominant. This is more likely gonna be posterior delt dominant. Lord knows what this is. More pec dominant. Again, more pec dominant specifically, this would be the costal fibers of the pec, which are the, the lower pec fibers. Anterior delt chest fly, so pec and anterior delt. When you think of arms, you, you typically think biceps and, and triceps. So biceps being up here, triceps being down here. Biceps, bi meaning two, so there are two primary heads of the biceps, the short and the long head. Then you've got the triceps, tri meaning three, same sort of thing applies. To work the biceps, you must engage in elbow flexion. And by that, I mean you must curl against resistance. So your elbow must bend against resistance. To work the triceps, you must engage in elbow extension. So your elbow must extend against resistance. A push down, a pressing motion, anything in which the arm is going from bent to straight against resistance is triceps. Anything in which the arm is going from straight to bent against resistance will include the biceps. Doesn't mean it's only gonna work then because if you're doing a rowing motion, you're gonna bring in a lot of the muscles of the back while bringing in the biceps. If you're doing a, a pressing motion, like a shoulder press, for example, you're gonna bring in things like the anterior delt, which is obviously the, the front delt here, as well as the triceps. That's pretty much what it is. So no, this is not an effective arm workout, unfortunately. I appreciate people trying to get people active and working out. And sure, if this worked for you, then fantastic. I just feel like a lot of people often find themselves feeling disheartened and disappointed after they do workouts like this and they don't achieve the results that they were almost promised or the results that they expected. Last one, let's have a look. To grow, you have to surprise the muscle. Let's have a gander. Obviously, this is, is like a parody. It's a bit of a joke where he's obviously pretending that the muscle was unaware that it's going to train suddenly, boom, 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 triceps. I think this whole kind of shock and surprise the muscle concept came around from, I want to say, Arnie, I think. Arnold, when he was back in the glory days, you say about shocking the muscle. No, you don't have to shock the muscle like this. You know, you don't have to surprise the muscle. That is just like one of, the, one of the oldest myths in like muscle building and hypertrophy and like bodybuilding perhaps. Shocking the muscle often came around for people who were like change their workouts every day. But realistically, if you change your workouts every day, how, how do you progress? I'm waiting for someone to comment TFNL bingo. Austin, I see what you're about to do. Don't stop typing it. Stop it. But how would you progressively overload if you change your workouts every day? And obviously, progressive overload is a fundamental principle when looking at the development of muscle. I don't know about you, but I quite like these TikTok videos because like I say, it's like an opportunity to almost like quick fire a bunch of like tidbits of information. So if you do have any TikToks you want me to have a look at, please do send them to me on the TikTok machine, which is obviously at Harry underscore TFNL. And I, I can add them to the list. I'll save them to my favorites and we'll have a gander for the next TikTok video. But now that is a video and that is, that is done. We must crack on with comment question of the week. Why would you lean forward in a leg extension? Would you also lean forward in a seated leg curl? You've mentioned before, but we'd love a more in-depth explanation. You're the best. No, you're the best. Thank you. The leg extension is obviously a quad movement. A fantastic one at that because it's the one that allows you to shorten the quads probably most efficiently and effectively. And it's also the, the only movement that really allows you to place mass amounts of emphasis on the rect fem, so the rectus femoris, which is a muscle of the quads, in its shortened position. And because that muscle crosses over at the hips, when you lean forward slightly, it then allows you to shorten that muscle a bit further. 
thus increasing the effectiveness of that movement for that muscle. So that's kind of why I've kind of suggested and promoted leaning forward slightly when you're doing a leg extension. But with the leg curl, if you want to lean forward on the leg curl, sure you can, you don't have to. It's the same with the leg extension, you don't have to. It just depends on what you're trying to achieve and whether doing so makes that movement more effective for your goals. That is it, that is the video. If you like the video, please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video. 1200 likes in the first 24 hours is obviously the goal. So if we could reach that, it'd be bloody splendid. If you haven't already, please do click the red button down below and subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next week so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week and if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video drop it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so thank you for tolerating me thank you for tolerating my bloody beautiful poetry earlier I must say and thank you for tolerating the video